Earlier last year, I made a video covering Golden Kamui, a seinen action anime set in the early 1900s involving various characters searching for a legendary pile of gold. In that video, I said that the series is a modern classic, and I still stand by this statement. Hell, I feel it even more now than I did then, and I'm excited for the fourth season recently announced. It's a fantastic show that is able to easily juggle intense action, gut-busting comedy, and genuinely heartfelt moments, all while having this incredibly unique style to it. There's really nothing quite like Golden Kamui. But during my video, there's one aspect I didn't touch on that's ever-present throughout the series. It's pretty f horny, and more specifically, goes out of its way to show the men in some pretty bold situations. And this, possibly more than any other part of the show, has had the greatest impact on me. One that would cause me to rethink, well, everything. Hi my friends, I'm Mike, and welcome back to the Lion's Lounge, where today we'll be diving into this part of Golden Kamui. But more specifically, how after ruminating on it, I've come to look at media in a whole new light. Because my friends, Golden Kamui has made me question my sexuality, and has led me to dive into a rabbit hole where, for the first time in my life, I'm exploring BL, or Boys Love Media. So strap in, because today I'm going to be sharing with you my experiences. This isn't going to be an in-depth analysis, but rather a gentle stroll. So let's kick things off at the very beginning by finally talking about the men of Golden Kamui, this time in a new light. A lot of seinen series will have extremely sexy women that they'll use for the purpose of fan service. And I'm not going to necessarily say that's bad, given that there's series like Prison School that utilize it very well. But for Golden Kamui, this is basically turned on its head. And instead, it's the men who find themselves in these situations. The most notable scenes I can speak to are really anything involving a hot spring or sauna, and of course, Season 2, Episode 20, or the sumo wrestling episode. It's definitely this one that's one of the most overtly gay, and that I still think about today. Like, a lot. It's pretty unforgettable, honestly. The series really goes out of its way to place these men front and center. Especially characters like Sugimoto and Tanagaki. Like, goddamn Tanagaki, use a thick boy. And this is always done in such a way that it adds a great deal of comedic levity to the series, while also not coming across as awkward because, well, it just feels like they know what they're doing. Look, I don't know if the creator of Golden Kamui is into dudes, but they sure as hell make me think they are. And I appreciate their work. Keep on making them beefcakes. I think what makes this series so incredible as well is just how varied the cast are. If you're looking for a husbando, you're kind of spoiled for choice here, because there's a lot of great characters to choose from. But for me, it's one I didn't actually talk much about in my original video, but I haven't stopped thinking about it since then. And hear me out, some of you may be thinking, why this dude? But just, just hear me out. Early on in Golden Kamui, Sugimoto and Ashirpa are confronted by soldiers from the 7th Division, under the command of Lieutenant Tsurumi, who's also hunting for the gold that's at the center of the series. Tanagaki is one of these characters introduced, but another is one that has a very minor role in this arc that later greatly expands to one that impacts the rest of the story, this being Ogata. Initially, Ogata just seems like a soldier who's out to claim the gold for himself, and he is, but he's a lot more complex than that. He's a talented sniper who's focused and analytical, and has a skill for manipulating his way into groups to use them to get what he wants. His arc, especially in Season 3, is extremely compelling, even more so as we come to understand his upbringing, and I think it's for this reason that he came to be my favorite character in the series. Is he a good dude? Uh, no. Hell no. He's a deeply troubled individual who believes everyone is inherently flawed, and cannot stand it when others defy his expectations of them by doing something noble. He's done terrible things to those who'd consider him a friend, and even to his own family. But damn is he fun to watch. And I mean, come on, look at him. I also may have spent a lot of time trying to track down an android of him that I also may have overpaid for, don't judge me, 
To sum it up, Golden Kamui isn't just great because of its story and characters, but also because it's one of the few series I've seen that leans into fan service with almost exclusively dudes, and it's perfectly natural. Please, if my previous Golden Kamui video didn't convince you, go ahead and watch it now. Okay, so this series kicked off my BL journey, but where did I end up next? Well, from here, I unintentionally gravitated towards one of my favorite new series from last year, Skate the Infinity, an original anime created by the legendary Studio Bones. Now, some of you may argue this isn't technically BL, but it's definitely geared towards that audience. The main cast is exclusively super attractive men, especially Langa, Cherry Blossom, Kojiro, and our antagonist, Adam, who just oozes with sexual energy. I mean, just look at this dude. Skate the Infinity takes place in Okinawa, and may be one of the only anime that covers skateboarding, which is wild to me that we get a series like this. The real selling point here, though, are the exciting and dynamic high-speed races between the characters, as well as the relationships between the leads, Reki and Langa, and how the former struggles to come to terms with his mounting inferiority complex, as his friend, who's new to skateboarding, quickly surpasses him. Cherry, Kojiro, and Adam are all veteran racers, and have their own unique styles. Cherry's revolving around his AI unit, helping navigate the courses, Kojiro using his raw physicality to perform maneuvers others can't, and Adam with his insane talent and skill, especially seen in his finishing move. If it's not already obvious, these races are extremely intense and dangerous, and more along the lines of battles while skateboarding, and they only get more and more harrowing as the series goes on, and Adam targets Langa as his new rival. Which, speaking of Langa, it was also pretty cool to see Canada get some representation. Langa's half Japanese and a former snowboarder from Canada who's come to Japan with his mother after his father suddenly passed away, and he subsequently started to lose interest in the sport. Upon meeting Reki though, he immediately becomes enamored with skateboarding and how different it is than snowboarding. The two are instantly drawn to one another by each other's passion, and it's really interesting to see how their relationship evolves throughout the series. Lastly, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about our main antagonist, Adam. Possibly the greatest skateboarder in the series, who, during the day, is a ruthless politician, but by night is the king of the streets. His skills, though, are so great that he feels he has no equal, and has begun to grow detached from the world and his friends, where he now only wants to find someone he deems worthy enough to skateboard alongside him. Seeing Cherry, Kojiro, and Adam's assistant Tadashi grapple during the series with their former friend is really interesting, and this main conflict is resolved very nicely by the end of the series. To put a cherry on top, Skate the Infinity is very well animated, with a great soundtrack, beautiful colors, and just a super interesting cast of characters, and I had a blast watching this every week as it aired. Now for our first cocktail of the evening, I wanted something tropical to go with that whole theme of Okinawa. So what better drink than a blue Hawaii? But in this case, instead of regular vodka, I'll be substituting it with orange vodka for a bit more complexity, but also to show how Reki had an influence on Langa. This is a shaken drink, and don't worry, the recipe is in the description below. And for this drink, you have to garnish it with a pineapple slice and an umbrella. And there you have the blue Hawaii. Cheers. I love this cocktail. And the substitution with the orange vodka instead of the regular vodka really brings out those citrus notes a lot more. It's really great. Taking a brief break from anime, I wanted to dive into some visual novels. And so my BL research quickly led me to 2017's Dream Daddy. Here you play as a widowed dad yourself, who's recently moved with your teenage daughter to a new neighborhood. What I immediately fell in love with about this game is just how warm and inviting its tone is. This is a super wholesome experience that, while not afraid to explore subjects like anxiety and loss, still puts the emphasis on emotional growth for the relationships you can cultivate. And let me tell you, you are pretty spoiled for choice here. Overall, you have seven dads you can date, each one being very unique in their personalities and likes. I myself was immediately drawn to Matt because, well, I mean, just look at this dude. Man's got sweet tats, owns a small coffee shop, and is a musician into alt-rock music? Yeah, sign me up. 
but I really loved that there was so much more depth with him than I initially thought once I started hanging out with him. And this is true for all of the characters. Each has their own struggles, and as you get to know them, you help them work through these problems and form a pretty powerful bond. I also really enjoyed how you spent some time with your daughter as well, which really helped sell me on the narrative that they were trying to tell here. You meet these dad's families, their children, and you discover new sides to them through these interactions. These are probably also some of the best character designs I've seen in all the visual novels I've played here. Each dad has a distinct look, which obviously caters to some person playing the game. I mean, some did for me, so yeah. I don't know, as far as visual novels go, I was super happy this was my first be all one I got into. Keeping up with the visual novel theme though, I next wanted to try something iconic. Something tantalizing. Something delicious. So I played the KFC visual novel, I Love You Colonel Sanders. Okay, okay, I know this isn't technically a BL game, but it's definitely in my head canon as one. And hey, if you're gonna make Colonel Sanders look that good, those devs knew who they were appealing to. I definitely have some issues with the game. Namely that it's super short, and being a licensed game, there's a fair amount of product placement. But it's free to play, so I kind of look past that a bit. I mainly gave this one a go because I was curious what a KFC visual novel would be like, and yeah, it's super tame. You play as a student at a culinary university alongside Colonel Sanders, and a few other original characters, and compete to become the best of the school over a period of three days. Other than the Colonel, most of the character designs are fun and quirky. Some looking a little less well proportioned than others, if I'm going to be honest. Though I do love that the professor is a talking corgi. I can't really say that the story is hilarious, but I did laugh a few times at the absurdity of some of the situations. It's not a super original plot, but it's not bad either. The music is kind of just there as well, not really any memorable tracks. All in all, I'd say it's a fairly average game and nothing about it really stands out. But it is free, and there's not really many games where you can date the literal icon of KFC, so there's that. Obviously though, if I'm talking about KFC, I wanted something sweet and salty that I think could pair with it. And this is a really great excuse to try out a Benton's Old Fashioned. This is an old fashioned made from fat washing bourbon, or in other words, adding bacon fat to bourbon, which in this case is Four Roses bourbon. And then you just substitute simple syrup with maple syrup. It's a fantastic drink, trust me. And of course, no old fashioned would be complete without an orange peel. And there you have a Benton's Old Fashioned. Cheers. What's great about this drink is that the bacon fat isn't the most dominant flavor. Rather, you get those sweet notes from the bourbon as well as some herbaceousness from the Angostura bitters. And then really the saltiness comes in at the tail end, but it's very minor, but also pleasant as it combines with the bourbon. Really worth giving it a try if you're interested. Switching back to anime, there's a fairly recent series I'd heard about that has more apparent BL representation. And it also has some very good reviews. This being 2019's Given, produced by Studio Lark. What really got me interested about this series is it follows the formation of an indie alt-rock band. And each episode is named after a song from a real-life alt-rock band. I was especially surprised that the 1975 was referenced in episode 3's title, but that's just me fanboying a bit. The series explores some heavy themes, like depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress, but in a very serious and considerate manner. I was also intrigued by how the various relationships between the cast are portrayed, those being the two leads, Ritsuka and Mafuyu, and their fellow bandmates, Haruki and Akihiko. All of them feel extremely distinct personality-wise, and I was really interested to see where they'd go, both as a band and in their personal lives. Being only 11 episodes long with an additional film, a lot happens in a short period of time. My only gripe with this show is that despite its setting involving this up-and-coming band, there's kind of a lack of music here, which is a bit of a shame as I sort of hope for more of a balance. Having seen series like Kids on the Slope, they juggle this type of narrative a bit better. But I did still enjoy how sincere the characters are at trying to make it big. So I'd say it's just me needing to come to terms that this is more of a romance series with musical themes than the other way around. I also want to quickly say that while I loved seeing the two leads' relationship grow and Mafuyu struggle to overcome depression, 
I was really rooting for Akihiko and Haruki. I don't know, maybe it's because they're both older and more mature, but they were super fun to watch together. Honestly, even more than the main characters. Regardless, Given is a fantastic series to watch if you're at all interested in dipping your toes into a BL series. Now, after all of this, I decided I wanted to pick up a different type of visual novel. Something a little more, well, sultry. And as luck would have it, there happened to be one for free on Steam that was set during the peak of Prohibition. This being your dry delight. You play as August Richter, a detective whose job it is to enforce prohibition with your partner, Leslie Clark, by rooting out organized crime organizations attempting to profit from illegally distributing booze. Until you meet a very charismatic mob boss, Meyer Eastman, who becomes super interested in Richter, both professionally and romantically. And from there, hijinks ensue as you struggle between your job and your heart, as well as your mounting uncertainty on whether Prohibition is actually worth defending. I did find the love triangle between Richter, Leslie, and Meyer extremely interesting, and it went in a way I didn't expect at all, which is always great. It's a pretty fun game that has a decent sized glossary for anyone not super versed in Prohibition. And the music is all jazz and classical, which is appropriate for the setting. The character models are all very attractive, and while it is a tad too short, being free I can't complain too much. Plus there's definitely some pretty hot scenes to make you happy. Now this last series is, after Golden Combly, honestly the main reason I started down this path. An anime I'm now kicking myself for not watching as it was airing, that has become one of my favorite series of all time. This isn't hyperbole either, this being 2018's Banana Fish, based on the manga of the same name and produced by Studio Mappa. Now there's a debate on whether Banana Fish is actually BL, but I honestly don't care. In my opinion, it goes beyond traditional boundaries and becomes a classic series that's both groundbreaking and emotional. While the original series is set in the 1980s, the anime has been modernized, but both primarily take place in the streets of New York. Here we're introduced to Eiji Okamura, a college student traveling to the US to help report on New York's gang violence, where he meets a young gang leader, Ash Lynx, who's on a crusade to uncover the secret to what caused his older brother's catatonic condition, which he believes the mob boss Dino is at the center of. Despite its odd name, Banana Fish is an incredibly serious crime drama. If you thought Gibbon had some dark themes, Banana Fish takes this to a whole nother level. Not only is there gang warfare and drug addiction, but most prominently there's sexual assault, and more specifically, involving Ash. None of the latter is ever explicitly shown, but the implied scenes are still very upsetting. So if this is a deal breaker for you, this may be a series to pass over. However, if you can handle it, you'll be treated to one of the best narratives in fiction I've ever seen, with some of the strongest character writing as well. No one in this series feels underutilized or unimportant. And the main cast, especially Ash, are all fantastic. The relationship between Ash and Ag, while initially more flirtatious, grows immensely, and becomes almost gut-wrenching as we learn more and more about Ash's past and what he's trying to accomplish. The city of New York really feels threatening, as it's not just street gangs like Ash vying for power, but the mafia led by Dino and the Chinese mob as well each having their own goals in mind. It's clear very early on though, that despite Ash's young age and all the pain he's been through, he's extremely capable. And there's a lot of points in the series where he uses his ingenuity and skills to make it out of harrowing situations others would probably deem hopeless. Being a fairly recent MAPPA production, you can probably already guess that the animation is top notch and the character designs are extremely distinct. I also want to say that this is one of the only series I've talked about today that has a truly stellar soundtrack, and I especially love the second ending theme that I quietly listen to at night and try not to cry to. There's a lot that I can say about Banana Fish and all of the little character interactions. How Ash's personality changes from an analytical crime boss and becomes much softer whenever he's with AG, or how AG starts to grow more and more independent as he spends more time with Ash. But this is a series you really need to experience for yourself, because it's not just another BL anime. It's Banana Fish, one of the best series I've ever seen, and I'm happy this journey has led me to it. 
So to wrap this all up, I have one final cocktail for you, combining both elements of Ash and Ag, the Sake Manhattan. This is a spirit forward drink with sake and bourbon and really speaks to a fantastic marriage of two different cultures. And there you have the Sake Manhattan. This one is super interesting. I've never combined bourbon and sake together, but the floral notes from the maraschino liqueur plus the cherry liqueur combine really well with this. And then it has Angostura and Peychaud's bitters for a little bit more herbaceousness. Overall, this is very boozy and a touch sweet, but it's not overly sweet. I gotta say, I may enjoy this more than a traditional Manhattan. The sake is playing a fantastic role here, kind of rounding out all the flavors so they're not as overpowering. In today's episode, we explored some BL series. At the end of the day, Golden Kamui clearly had an impact on me. I don't know if I would have went down this rabbit hole if I hadn't seen the series, but I can definitely say I'm better off for it. And I'm excited to see other series in the near future. So if you have any recommendations for me based on what I've already presented, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll cover it in a future video. This has been an extremely fun journey that's required a lot of work and research as it's a subject I've never covered before. But I really appreciate you coming along this journey with me. And if you wanna get updates on more of my videos or see what I make outside this channel, Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Space Lion or Instagram at Mr. Space Lion. But friends, thank you so much for stopping by the Lions Lounge. I've been your bartender, Mike, and I hope to see you next time.